Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Swave Color. This is going to be the part two of Butterfly and the Frog. Um, the part one was a uh, live, and I decided to redo it because completely because it came out incorrectly. Uh, the alcohol inks that I used that were the Zig alcohol inks and the resin didn't weren't true color inside the resin, so I ended up having to redo it. So these are the colors right here, the color swatch that I have to do. Um, the Facebook art challenge group um, that I'm the Facebook group I'm in artist Fest Facebook group ATD um, had that range of colors and you have to have you had to have a butterfly and you had to use only those colors so and it can be in a poor medium so I used Ranger alcohol inks I used Zig alcohol um, ink refills and I think that was all the ink brands that I used with alcohol ink and so um, what I did is I traced like um, I projected and traced onto this artist round well technically my wife did because <laughs> she is much better at that than I and quicker and um, and then I um, went to alcohol ink, kind of an abstract image. I wanted it kind of blurred over it, but not too much. Um, so I'm just going to be putting the inks down and layering them. Um, and I did, however, forget to realize that well, I didn't forget to hit the record button, but I didn't see that it wasn't recording. Um, when I did hit it, it didn't record. So, um, after you see me d putting down the line work of the f picture image, I, um, had to do my second layer of alcohol inks to deepen what I had because it was really light. And, um, unfortunately you don't see that part, but you see everything else. <laughs> So I do have this exceptionally sped up um, while I'm doing, you know, certain parts throughout because it would be really long otherwise. So I hope that's okay. Another thing that I find a bit frustrating with the Zig um, marker refills is that I think I need to start shaking them before I lay them down because what I've noticed is there's like some kind of I don't know if it's like an oil residue or what that um, keeps them from blending correctly. And as you see, there's like some bead, uh, beaded areas of like coagulated alcohol ink, basically. And um, I don't know what that is. It's almost like it resists, you know, um, absorbing into the substrate. So, uh, but it's, you know, it's not all, all of them. And I have literally every color that they make of the Zigs, um, at the complete color palette, but, uh, but it's some of them. And so I don't know, I don't know what, why that is, but I wonder if I, if I shook them, if that would help, um, get rid of that. But, uh, the only other thing that's hard with those two is again, is like when you, when you put them down and you go to color with them, which is what the issue was with the resin um, I, that I had totally forgotten. It's been a minute since I've used them. Um, and that is that if you do, if they aren't, once they are activated into alcohol, they completely change a different color. Um, and you're like, wait, what in the world? I thought this was light blue and it could look, you know, red or something. I mean, it's pretty dramatic. So that's a dramatic example, <laughs> a hypothetical example. But so, but as you're drying it and the alcohol is dissipating and the ink itself is drying, it goes to the true color, which is that, you know, blue that you wanted or whatever. So, um, even though I've swatched these, it's still, it still kind of throws you off. So just be mindful of that as well. Um, you know, don't freak out too much, but you definitely want to swatch uh, the Zig refills before you do anything, if you can. <laughs> 
So over here, I'm going to be adding to the butterfly. It's called, uh, it's by Marabou. It's called, I think, Rainbow. Um, and it's like basically a mica. And it, it literally looks like a rainbow shimmer. Um, you know, iridized like rainbow shimmer. And um, so it's kind of like a pearlescent um, kind of alcohol ink. But it's, I'm pretty sure it's mica in it. Um, and so depending on how the light hits and where the angle you're looking at, it's really, really pretty, but it, you know, you could see blue, you can see violets, you can see, um, greens and, uh, per, you know, in there and depending on what ink you're using, if you couple it with the ink itself versus just use it by itself on top of the ink after it's dried or whatever, it, um, it enhances whatever colors so like the pink that I'm putting down right here, um, which blow out. I don't know what it is about yellows and reds. They like blow out on these cameras. Um, but, uh, it really, and it really is beautiful if you drop down your ink and then you put the marabou, uh, drop it on top of that and blow it around and you know, your with your alcohol as your base, um, it's so pretty and it really enhances the color. So like, especially with the blue, with the purple, it's just a really neat and almost gives it a, like a color shift kind of feel too. It's really beautiful. Um, their gold does that. And I just have the metals and the rainbow. I didn't get the color colors of the marabou inks. Wasn't a fan of the ink itself. So I was kind of grateful that I didn't like get all crazy and do that. <laughs> So I have a tendency to get all the set of everything. So I just, you know, um, also did the tree stump, the colors of, uh, I think it was Ranger Sandal. I had forgotten to take a picture of them. Um, or Beach. Something. Kind of peachy. And then, um, and then a green. Uh, I think it was pistachio. Yeah, it was the green that I used in that for the bark part. So now, basically, like, this is kind of my base, this layer that I'm doing. And I'm just going to paint black, the eye, and the spots, and the nose, I think, on the frog and the eye. Uh, and the butterfly's body and the spots with black alcohol ink. It's uh, Pitch Black by Ranger. And I just have a paintbrush and I'm just literally like painting it down because uh, my plan is to go over it with the 3D art pen. 3D, 3D Doodler, I think, or 3D Doodler. I think it's pronounced 3D Doodler though. Um, and it's basically what it is, it's plastic, uh, two forms of plastic that melt and burn within the pen and you can draw on it and it, you can literally draw straight up and it, uh, you know, it sticks out and it's reading and it's rad. So it's really fun. And the problem is my pen is defective, unfortunately. So, um, uh, I have to call customer service. So it was very challenging. I didn't know if I was going to be able to complete it trying to do it uh, because it kept not wanting to feed through the plastic to heat it up to melt it through the other end. So I kept having to uh, unclog it and try to, you know, I was wasting a lot of prog doing that. So I was kind of frustrated. But in the end, I finally was able to get it done. I had planned on doing the butterflies like spots with it as well. Um, the black spots to go over that and do that as well. And I didn't and I wanted to, to do more layers like I said to build up so you do like a base when you color with it when you draw with it um, you just keep redrawing over and over on the top part and so um, that creates that height and you just keep going up well there was no way I was gonna even try to attempt that because it was such a challenge to just even get the outline done on what I what I was able to do and I was just like Ugh. this was literally I literally did this for like two and a half hours like that's how laborious the process was this is really sp this is sped up and so um 
you know, and a lot of um, edits of cutting out the fact that I'm, like, struggling with this pen, like, trying to get it to feed and everything. So I shouldn't, like, as you see me, like, kind of pushing on it right there, like, I shouldn't have to be doing that at all. <laughs> it should automatically just be pushing through. So, and I'm like, what is going on? So when you see that, that's why it's probably in the, you know. Um, but once, once I had it in and feeding, then for the most part it would work. But at that point, as you see my thing so short, like it, it just would take, it would just waste so much product. And, um, and then it, boom, I had to re fill it again, again, feed it through. And that's what's to the right, those strips. Um, that I kept trying, um, that I ended up having to cut at the end. So there is another actually kind of pen that I was looking into. I really like this in sense, but, uh, unfortunately from all the reviews that I read it, this was gifted to me by my mother-in-law and all the reviews that I read on this, um, there's like, you know, had an issue with it or whatever with that, it not feeding through on a specific model and I have no idea what model I can't find the model number anywhere on what I have but I'm pretty sure this is that one so even if they give me a new one um unfortunately I've seen reviews of other people saying that um that a specific model or every single pen was like that it was like something wrong with the feed to begin with so um and it was a YouTube video a gentleman's YouTube video uh who had uh, figured that out and gotten the correct one. So, but I think I'm going to get a different one because uh, I really had plans for this. I'm doing collaboration piece and I use this on the collab and I was going to continue to use it on other stuff with that part of that collab and I can't. So I have to like rethink of how I'm going to do this, what I was going to originally do uh, because of that until I can afford to get a better 3d pen or a different one um because I you know they're just gonna replace it with the same I'm sure model and that's the defective model so <laughs> I don't know I'll get into it but anywho either way it's actually really rad when it works and it's really really fun and it just adds another really cool layer and depth even just doing it like this, this one first layer, it was just, it, it is 3D, it pops up. So it's like nice and thick and it stays and it sticks and it's really easy to use. It is like, you know, drawing with the pen in that sense and there's two different speeds. So, um, I was really bummed and there's a ton of different colors too. And I had so many plans <laughs> for this thing. I was like kind of really bummed. Um, but it's really fun, so it was just a new element of arting, and it was really cool. So I'm just outlining, tracing the outline of this entire thing. So what I did fill solid was the antenna of the butterfly, the body and the legs of the butterfly, and the frog's eye. And so I made that, like, I filled that in solid. Um, so it's not just, like, an outline, like, the rest of the stuff. It's actually, like, I first outlined it, and then I went back in and, like, filled it. So, um, and I was, like I said, I was going to originally do that on the spots of the butterfly that are black. Basically, everything that was painted with about black alcohol ink, I was going to put that on top. Um... But I just, I just didn't want to struggle with it any longer after that. My back was killing me. I was like over it. <laughs> I was like, that's okay. <laughs> so see, even right here, it's, I'm like messing with it. <laughs> Trying to get it work. And I guess I, I apologize. I didn't edit that little waiting moment out. It does have a part where it like, it'll, it'll keep kind of, even though you can turn it off in a sense and stop it, cause it always has to be plugged in to work. It doesn't, it doesn't take batteries. 
And so, um, you know, it would kind of like keep seeping out for a little bit, um, even though there's a way to double track in to make it retract. Um, so that was kind of weird and annoying because again, it was wasting your product. So I was like, okay, but you know, for it being compact and doing what it really can do when it works, like it's actually pretty cool and pretty efficient for the most part. Mine's just effective. <laughs> so I don't want to deter people from the 3D pin world, but that's pretty cool. You know, and with these pins, by the way, like, I, I don't know if you've seen things done, but um, you can literally, like, sand them. You can heat them with a heat gun after you draw something and smooth it out to where it's, like, it is very smooth. And you would, you know, like... Uh, I'm trying to think of an action figure. You would buy at like a store or something. Just think of that kind of smoothness of plastic. You can actually do that um, with these pens. It's just, you know, you can you know, sand it and just like clay, shape it, heat it up, melt it, and do all this stuff. So you can get really elaborate um, with these uh, pens and they come in rainbow color, all the different plastics and everything. So... Uh, sky is the limit with your imagination and what you can do with them. So they are actually a really, really cool art tool. And I was really excited to, when I saw it at first, I was like, wait, I don't, you know, see in 3D. So I have, in 3D, I don't see depth. I have no depth perception. So at first I thought, like, how am I supposed to roll 3D? Like, I, and then um, there was this one woman, and I can't believe I can't think of her name. That I've seen on Facebook and I'm pretty sure she uses this kind of implement tool and within her art resin and she does some crazy amazing like 3d kind of looking art with resin and um I wish I could remember her name oh my gosh um but that made me go ah okay I don't have to like literally build the Eiffel Tower <laughs> from the ground up, which is one of the things that a lot of you see a lot of people do with these 3D pens, um, a mini version of Eiffel Tower, things like that, um, nature. So I was like, that opened a whole horizon when I saw a couple things of her art and I thought, oh my gosh, that is so rad. And it just made me go, this is so cool. I was really, really excited. Um, I was really excited when I had found, when I had found it and my wife had forgotten all about it and so we were cleaning out the closet one day and I was like what's this she was like I don't know it's in a box <laughs> she was like oh my gosh so that was really really cool so I'm just trying to trace that mouth line and it is getting used to like the speed in which your hand moves fluidly along with what you're doing so the cool thing I know is like when I would mess up or if it fed too fast then I would um you know it would leak so I'd always wipe off the axis which is what you see me doing there uh, you know it just automatically kind of just keeps going and so I um would use because kind of like soldering the tip is what gets hot um so if I had stopped and started because of this uh, happening um, which makes a glob mark, I would like just use the tip that was already super hot and like remelt it basically and kind of pull it and smooth it out and then feed through to try to get more of an even um, uniform line. So, but it was, you know, it's just, um, you just need to get used to the movement of the speed of your hand. Uh, so that way their lines look fluid as well. So I had to refeed another. The other pens use, I've noticed, um, it's not straight. Like theirs is on, on these huge, like, coils and... So it's like their uh, PLAs or PSAs of uh, plastic will are um, able to feed through 
um, on a continuous loop, basically. So you wouldn't have to wait. Like this pen, technically, you're supposed to be able to art with it nonstop for two hours and two hours, I think, or a little over two hours, something like that. Um, which I could not, like I had to wait, you know, I had to stop, like I was trying to stop every like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, um, because it would just, I was like, okay, it's not working, you know, and, you know, and then when it finished before I could feed it through, I would just kind of give it a break. I would unplug it, let it cool down, like give it a break just in you know, to try to help. So, but I wasn't, I shouldn't have had to do that. I should have been able to just pop in a new um, plastic filament and keep going for two hours, supposedly. <laughs> And my head's in the way because it's in the way. Because <laughs> I need to see. See, like right there. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm heating it up and peeling it off with the tip of the pen. So that way I can. So I'm stopping. I'm hitting the button. There's two buttons on the utensil itself, the unit. And I also, it also came with a foot pedal. My uh, mother-in-law was so thoughtful and um, bought the extra like foot foot pedal with it but I, I didn't use a foot pedal on this I was just trying to get used to the pen itself so I thought that's going to be you know I'm just going to use the buttons for now and then um, you know I would just heat it up and then let it go and remove if I didn't like you know I would heat it up and kind of like pull it off and with the tip So here I was like, one more feed, come on, one more feed. So I just pulled that off immediately because I didn't like the way the line went. And it's just knowing where, how to draw the line that's best to not catch on anything. Because you do, you don't want to necessarily scrape and like put it directly on your board and scrape. Because like I said, it's, it's kind of like soldering in the sense that it'll make a line on your board and, you know, groove, which isn't a bad thing per se but it was here because it was making it was taking away my ink and showing like a white line that I was like me um so you have to kind of learn to float a little bit above like light handed a little bit above your piece just so that way um it lays but at the same time not too high up so that way it sticks to your your piece but um like you can literally write on paper blue electrical tape and make a drawing as a base, you know, just to be able to like draw up. There's all sorts of fun stuff with this pen. My original idea was like to to really get that to pop and be high up and and then the color like set in side. And I thought this would be cool to do with like actually do this as like little individual pockets and then actually put color with resin like colored resin you can fill it in and i wanted to do that you know there's like so many things i wanted to do with this pen i was like this is gonna be fun <laughs> so this is me just filling it in which is just kind of like a back and forth movement. Think of icing on a cake if you've ever done that, which I have not, <laughs> but I've seen it um, on TV done. Uh, but yeah, so it's like that back and forth movement, you know, just filling it in. That way it sticks to each other, the plastic. So you want to make sure your plastic's touching plastic each time to go back and forth. Which is also how you build your layers up to create that 3D look. And so here it is after it's all done. 
Um, this was my second time. You know, I added the inks. Remember how I told you earlier how I forgot, or I didn't forget, but I didn't realize it didn't actually record. So that's why it's way darker. So with this, this is an adhesive pen, the Mona Lisa um, um, stylo adhesive pen. And um, it's to adhere any of your gold leafing or the gilding planks I'm going to use right here with Nuvo. Um, any kind of um, flake or gold leafing or whatever that product you want to put down. And so I, this is where basically I stop, I take a photo, and that's the photo I submit for the Facebook challenge because what I want to do after, which is this, is not a part or allowed in the challenge. So um, I put the, um, basically it's a pen and you just draw with it. I put it wherever I want it out, like a highlight or creative, you know, bling area. And I have silver is the color of the Nouveau Gilding Flakes that I'm gonna be using. So I just draw where I want it, and it gives it time to get, you know, tacky and sticky. And you're gonna see me push the pen in the tray. You're gonna see me just hold it down, push it down to get it to activate. Basically, the nib goes, retreats and retracts within the pen, allowing it to absorb and allow the flow of the glue to come out. And then once you see the glue kind of puddled on there, then you know it's absorbed into your nib tip. And then you move on. Um, what I do want to know if, if I can find this pen in uh, like a, a lot more narrow, uh, finer uh, nib. Because it's, it's pretty thick and big, so it's kind of chunky. So you can't really get like super defined um, lines with it, uh, which... I would, I have a glue jar to do that with, I guess, so I could do, I could, I would have to like paint it on type thing, but I love the convenience of having it a pen personally. Um, so I hope they make this specific brand, um, in like a smaller one. I just got to look into it to see, um, cause that way if I want a big area, then boom, I have a bigger one. But if I want to do really fine detail work or get in between little areas, like some of these areas around the plastic were kind of small, so it's kind of complicated then I would do that with the smaller pen. And then I would highly transfer, like this jar is so full um, and I just, it's time. I just haven't been lazy and not had the time to like sit down and transfer and find a container to transfer my gilding flakes or my silver leafing um, into other Tupperware. So that way it's just not overflowing and billowing everywhere. And cause there's actually a lot packed into that jar. Um, so I'm, I just am putting them on, placing it where it, where I know it's where I can still see the shine of the glue and where I know it is on top of it. And then I'm just rubbing it in, rubbing it in. And, um, and then I just dust it off with the, paintbrush and then I'm because I was just like I don't I knew I was gonna resin and I didn't want this anymore I grabbed a little like handheld dustery my Dyson um, is a vacuum but it also detaches into like a little handheld type of thingy and so I grabbed that and just had it suction up I like didn't want this because the stuff just goes everywhere flies everywhere and I didn't want it anywhere in the resin I didn't want it to be so <laughs> um so my wife kindly came over and was vacuuming as I was like pushing it with the gently into the vacuum <laughs> so that was a little team effort What I love is if you can see over here really finely, there's um, silver leaf little tiny, tiny little crumblies that I was hoping would stick a little bit, and it did. Um, and to, so it's kind of like, like a little bit of stardust highlight shimmer um, where it's like solid on the lines, but then there's, you know, little speckles throughout that look really cool on the frog. And then a little bit, a, a little bit in where the butterfly leaf, uh, like outside of it. Um, so that was really neat that I was able to get that. And then this is Stone Coat R Coat Countertops Resin. Um, and I'm just doing a flood coat 
over that if we're just clear resin. And I'm just heating those bubbles up with that heating gun and just smearing it. You want to not thin your resin out too incredibly much, but I needed to really make sure that it was all in between um, every part of that plastic of the 3D. You know, it created basically, you know, an encased area um, where I had to make sure it was just all in those spots and stuff, so... Which are not really, really rad. If I do say so myself. And there it is. Still wet. Um, it's not cured. And then we take it outside so you could see. And I was like, could barely see. It was so bright out. So as you see this video, my hair is flying amok around me. And you'll see like at the end, like this weird like blah, 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 in front of it. And that blah, 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 blah is my hair. <laughs> But so I could not see it. You know how it's so blinding. You can't see your phone. I'm like, I don't know what you're seeing. They're, actually, the wings do shimmer. It's just I'm not getting it in the right lighting and angle for you to see that. Same with the gold, uh, the silver gilding flake. Like you can't see how reflective it is. The angle apparently I'm at. And I apologize for that in that sense because I really couldn't tell. Um, it was just so blindingly sunny out, and then my phone was just so dark, I could not, and then my hair flying everywhere. <laughs> but um, I hope you enjoyed, and thank you so much. This was really, really fun to do, and um, please share, subscribe, hit that bell to get notifications, and give this a thumbs up, and stay safe, everyone. COVID-19 is still out there, so just be smart and stay safe. And be kind and loving to everybody because we're all around the world, you know, needing just patience and grace. All right. Happy arting and God bless.